All right, thanks, Brendan. And welcome, everyone. Thank you for listening in. Today, we're going to talk about in-app purchases, uh, specifically for uh, in, uh, mobile marketplaces, that is, uh, in the Google Play Store, as well as the Android, uh, I, Apple iTunes Store. And typically, what you see is a game that's built in Unity. It goes free to play in these two marketplaces, and the entire revenue stream from this game is made up of in-app purchases or microtransactions. So today I'm going to show how to set up items in PlayFast to enable microtransactions, how to make uh, microtransactions calls from within Unity, as well as how to take the data you get back from Google Play or Apple, send that to PlayFab for server-side validation to ensure that the receipt is consumed and is no longer usable for future exploits like receipt hacks and uh, multiple purchases using uh, different manipulation of, of the receipt. So we actually offer a service that's free to use for combating that. And uh, <clears throat> I'm going to take you through the, the whole process here. Today we're primarily going to be focusing on Android, but I will talk uh, through the Apple process. Uh, so first I'm going to talk a little bit about the real money purchase system, some of the best practices for using soft currencies. We'll move on to uh, making the purchase and validating the receipt. And then we'll also cover the playback pieces and uh, make the purchase. Um, excellent. So for optimal results, you're going to want to list only your currency packs, your premium currency packs in your mobile marketplaces. And this has a few reasons for doing that. First is uh, it's very easy to set these up once and just leave them there. No matter what you do with your game, how many items you add later, what prices they become, what types of data you want to tweak down the road, you really don't have to tweak your currency pack. So the only money, the only thing that money is actually buying in your game are these currency packs. It's common to see small, medium, and large currency bundles. Um, you can have you know, multiple different types of currencies, but typically you want to take these currencies, exchange those for real money, and then use your game client and server system can use those in currency, uh, the in-game soft currency to uh, enable uh, the premium features, premium purchases, or whatever you're using to, uh, or whatever you're selling with this premium currency. So we see we set up our uh, currencies in both the stores. Those are identical. So in this example, we've got small, medium, and large gem bundles. And then PlaySap automatically create, uh, converts that purchase into the currency that my player can use in-game. Uh, and then we've talked about a little bit of the benefits. I'm just going to run over this list. There's no need to keep the multiple catalogs in sync. They're, you know, set it up once and forget it. Uh, you can adjust the purchasing power of the currencies without having to make changes on the Apple or Marketplace side. You can manually grant players the currency if some kind of issue arises with, uh, you know, a hacked account or some kind of uh, error happens where they make a purchase and Apple actually de deducts the money from their account, but then they didn't actually get the receipt, the didn't receive the item in game. It's very easy to remedy this with the PlayFab system just by granting the player the currency that they should have received and you can resolve the issue quite easily and cleanly. And then also doing this type of system makes it easy to run sales. That would be something like a, hey, all of our premium currency, all of our gems are 50% off. Uh, moving on to the next slide. Uh, so basically, these are the things that have to be done. You need to set up a PlayFab account. Uh, if you all are coming in and haven't heard of PlayFab, wanting to know more about it, it's free. Check us out at playfab.com. Once you have an account and uh, you've got a catalog set up, uh, you can move on to ensuring that the mobile marketplaces are linked in to the catalog. And then you make the API call from Unity. And for this example, I'm going to be using the open in-app billing plugin. This is a common open source plugin that's used in many, many platforms in the uh, development community. Uh, you, you can check it out. They have a GitHub page. Uh, I will say, however, they're moving on to a new system and that there are other premium plugins out there that are very common, commonly used and they will work just fine. Some of those will be Stance Assets or Prime 31 plugin. All of those are going to be able to get you the data from the purchase. Uh, they're going to enable you to make the native API calls into Google and Apple, as well as get the data you need to validate that purchase on the PlayFab side. So all of those work. 
And then also, you once you get those details, you send it to PlayFab, and then we validate that to ensure that it is a valid purchase. <clears throat> All right. So for the Google Play setup, there is some uh, details that I wanted to walk through. But first, I'm going to switch to the catalog screen. Um, all right. And from here, this is our PlayFab dashboard for the title. I'm currently signed in to my uh, title. I'm signed into my game. And under the tabs here, we have economy. And this is where all uh, items, item manipulation, currency manipulation, stores, and loot drop tables all can be modified and manipulated from within this page. Currently, I'm looking at the uh, catalog part of this tab. And I've got a very simple catalog with three items. And you may have seen, see some similarities if you checked in to our previous webinars. Marco did a webinar on general purchasing, and he used this same title with, this same, with these same details. But for this example, we've added an additional item called Small Gym Bundle. And we'll talk more about the, the actual naming here of, of why it's in lowercase and, and underscores. But basically, this is a uh, representation which needs to directly link to both Apple and Google stores via the item ID on our side and the product ID on the Apple and Google side. Uh, but here we have the basic details of our item, small gem bundle. This is an item where we are planning on granting five gems. Uh, we can look at the price here. We've set it up to be a real money price of 99 cents. And that is directly matching the price that we set in our Apple store. Note that these, these are in, this amount here is in pennies rather than a decimal figure. So that's 99 pennies. If you were going to do a higher transaction, like $1.99, that ends up being 199 in that field. And then our, what actually happens when this item is obtained and purchased, or purchased and obtained, is we're going to add a currency of uh, gold, but uh, I don't see gems there. So let's quickly bounce over to the currency tab and see what currencies are set up for this game. Currently, there's only one currency. So we're going to add in a, a new currency. We're going to call this gems. And it had, takes a two-letter currency code as well as a string name and then an initial deposit. So every player that signs in will get an, an, init an initial balance of five gems. And we're going to save that. And OK. And then back over to our catalog here, we're going to set up our gem award. And we talked that this is going to re be a five gem purchase. We're going to save this out. So now, uh, when the player gets this item, the, the small gem bundle, they will automatically get five gems added to their gem currency balance. And I'm just going to check through the fields here to make sure everything looks OK. And Save out, and let's go over to the slide deck here and talk a little bit more about uh, the, the Google side of things. So you saw the item get set up with small gem bundle as the ID. And then here, we're just calling out that you know make sure that those match in your Google Play developer console. Uh, the all, under, all, under, all lowercase and underscored titles of Title IDs are nice because both Apple and Google support that format. There are some restrictions, I believe, from one or the other store. I know they all support underscores and all lowercase. So that's easy to keep those in sync. And like I said before, the ID has to match wherever though they are listed in the various marketplaces. Here's some additional details for setting up your Google Play Store. And this is for testing. Uh, once you get fully set up, there is um, it's not exactly well documented, and there's a lot of gotchas that can happen once you presumably have everything set up. So make sure and pay special attention to these items. Uh, so you, not, you need to make sure that your Google Play Development Console title is set up properly. That's you know, everything from your basic details, and you've got a development account, and you've got the right API keys turned on and set up for in-app purchases, and then you have to make an initial update, upload of your first APK. And this APK is very important. Or whatever you're going to test with needs to be in sync, not only on your device, but also on the store. They need to be exact. And these 
items here kind of go through how exact they need to be. So you have to make sure that you have installed the signed APK. So you, if you're going through Unity, you make sure and put in your key and sign your through your development sign, uh, signing process. And make sure that that same APK is in the store and the one that you're testing with. If they are out of sync, you will get an error message that says item could not be found when you try and reach into the Google Play Store. Uh, additionally, you'll want to make sure that you have a test account in your developer console. So this is on the website, the, the, the Google Play developer console. Make test, test accounts there that you can use. And they need to be different than your actual development account that you use to sign to make the uh, account in the administrator account needs to have additional testing accounts also available to make this happen. You can't do it with the actual creator. Uh, and then once you've got an account set up in developer console, also make sure that you send, sign in your testing device with the testing account. And this is a little bit cumbersome if you're doing it on a personal phone because you need to sign out of your current uh, Testing, uh, your current account, if it happens to be the same as the Google testing account, which was the case for me. So uh, really you just want to have access to the testing account on both places, that they're linked up, that this account will test this device, and then you've given it permission in the console. Once those are set up, you can create the in-app billing for your develop, developer console. This is creating the item, making sure the item ID is uh, uh, matching to the place app side and then activating that item once you create it. So when you create it by default, I believe they're listed as inactive, and you select a drop-down list to the, to the right of that item, and you can activate it from within the store. Once that is set up, uh, you are, in theory, good to go for the item. And then the next thing to do is just make sure that whatever your build is, make sure that the version code, version name, and the manifest matches exactly to that that's been uploaded. And then lastly, mind the delay. Some of these changes when you make to the Apple, I mean, to either store has a little bit of a lag or delay on until you can see those downstream on a device. So I've seen that be as short as four hours, but I've seen it also be over 12 hours. So definitely keep that in mind if you're doing something time-based and need to show somebody, make sure and get this set up well in advance to ensure that everything will be replicated across the marketplaces in time. Moving on to the Unity development. So Marco has created us a sample project based on a previous webinar, and we're going to walk through that and show the uh, sign-in and everything may look familiar for those that were in previous webinars, but I can walk, it's very simple, we'll walk through it all together. So this is our sample project. We're going to be running it in the editor, but it is important to note that if you want to test the full cycle in-app purchase, these are things that cannot be done through the Unity editor. You need to build that to a device, whether it's iOS or Android or how, whatever device you're using. Many of those do not work in the uh, you know, editor mode or any other build mode other than their build target on the device itself. So that being said, we will only show so much in this editor, and then I've got some screenshots that show uh, additionally, the rest of the flow from a sample app that we have running on our device here. So we're going to uh, sign in, and immediately we get signed in with a uh, custom device ID that's attached to this machine. Uh, that's covered in some of our login examples and our login API. Definitely check out those if you are looking for information on how to log people in. But for now, we'll just focus on the store here. So you see the three items. and for uh, completeness, I'm going to show where these items are. So we've got our three items here in our catalog, our potion, our cake, and our gem bundle. And those are attached to a store here. And our game client is asking, give me the items in that store. And we're displaying them here for uh, the client. And then this enables us to purchase these items. This one is using 10 gold coins. This is 20 gold coins. And this one's set for 99 cents or real money. And when we make this purchase, uh, we're going to, at this point, once we confirm the purchase, it's going to launch the Google Play overlay where you log in, sign in with the appropriate account. Then it's going to try and attack, uh, let's see, attach to the billing account. And then once that billing is complete, it will give you the success. And then that success will return you to Unity. 
And at that point, that is where you get the details that have come back from that transaction and pass those along to Playfab. So moving from the actual uh, UI here to the code, we can look through some of these uh, at a classes at a high level. So I'm going to zoom in here. I remember the hotkey. Nope. Just a little bit bigger here. Thanks for bearing with me. All right, so as we wake, when the client wakes up, when the script and object wake up, we're logging in with custom ID. Then we've got, we get the data from PlayFab. That's illustrated here. We're pulling out of our item catalog. That's all maintained, edited, and updated all from the game manager tool in the web. Our, uh, once we get set up, we're immediately launching the store. So we're requesting the store, and that store gets the items that you see there. We're displaying them, uh, you know, just in a cascading fashion to the right. And then once we make the purchase, we ultimately end up with the item controller where we're making a logic call where we say, is, does this have virtual currency prices? Does this item have virtual currency prices? And is it a real money purchase. So if that's the case, we know that we will be making a real money call, and that's where we uh, make our uh, our purchase event. And okay. All right. So after that, we will uh, move in here to the. Back to the deck here to show some screens from this whole flow running in our Unicorn Battle demo app. So I'll talk briefly about what's going on in each screen and kind of what the, the logic is that is driving the whole decision that I'll show. Uh, so first, here at the top, you can see a what's happening box. And the what's happening box for this game typically shows sales and events that are currently happening right now. So this tells us that, hey, there's a launch party going on and there's great prices on items for new players. This is set up so that there's a launch party store that has its own set of items. And those items are a large pile of gold, medium pile of gold, crystal key, and a small gem bundle. And at this point, uh, if we are interested in making a purchase, buy gets clicked, and then the overlay comes over like this is a small bundle, a bundle of gems at a price of 99 cents, and this is directly tied into Google Play. And for this example, we're running in sandbox mode, so this is with the testing accounts enabled in the Google Play beta program. The actual money transaction doesn't hit the uh, the act. I, I'm not actually being charged here. I am in sandbox mode. Once that has been validated, we get a payment successful. And then that returns us back into the application where we are running our validation code. And for the validation pieces, I will refer to our documentation where we have our validate Google Play purchase. And pretty the, it's, uh, the open in-app billing has a callback that once that purchase succeeds, we have, it automatically provides exactly what we need. There's no more. Uh, processing that has to be done on that data. You basically supply the signature and receipt JSON, and I believe the uh, variable name is original JSON for that, that file, and then its signature. Once those are provided into the standard playfab call, you'll see the request looks something like this. So lots of serialized JSON data, and then a uh, you know, uh, RSA key signature. Uh, once that's completed, you'll get a success response, and that item, the bun small bundle of gems, will be added to the player's inventory. And that's pretty much the process for getting through the end-to-end -end process for in-app purchases. We do offer in-app purchases for Steam, Facebook, and uh, Amazon. Those require a little bit different process. We're going to cover those in an upcoming webinar. But this is the process for your mobile marketplaces, Google Play, Apple, iTunes Store. They work very similar. They have a little bit different data. We can show the iOS call here. 
So we make a uh, validate iOS call. We do have offered that one. And then the data here gives the uh, gives an, gives you a look into what this one looks like. And they provide a little bit different data, a lot more of the RSA key, um, and then the currency code, receipt price. You build that receipt, send that off to the PlayFab service, and it gets validated. And just like the uh, just like the uh, Google, the Android one, this item gets added after that receipt has taken place. And with that, I believe there is one area I wanted to go revisit here, and that is the the purchase controller. So just a moment while I find that. All right. So, and this is a uh, this is the main file that we are using with the in-app. Open IAB and app billing plugin. So, if you take a look at the Unity project here, we've got our plugin, Open in app billing. This has all of our details. This is straight out of their install. So, you get the Open in app billing package for Unity. That will give you all of these files. Then, you can uh, take a look at some of their examples. That's mostly where this comes from. And they show you all of the different events that are running all the ones that you should subscribe to, and then walk you through the process that basically you, in, you initialize your plugin, which has uh, mapping your Android SKUs. These are the product IDs, small gem bundle, and you're telling it which platform it's on. This one's Google. You would also want to have a code block that does this for Apple in that scenario. After you've mapped your SKUs to the plugin, then you're going to set up a blank option give your Google Plus developer key, and then initialize the uh, plugin to get all together. Once that initialization takes place, you will we'll get an uninitialized callback. And at that point, you will know that the, I don't think we have a, we're not subscribed to that event there, but there is an uninitialized callback that you can key off of if you are wanting to do some logic as soon as that finishes. Um, at that point, this plugin kind of sits in the background and waits on a purchase to happen. So when that purchase does take place, it will look basically like this, where you've got an open in-app purchase, open in-app billing, purchase product. Once that purchase takes place, you will see the callback come back on either purchase failed or purchase succeeded. And this is where we take our, our data, original JSON and signature, supply that into the PlayFab request, send that request off, and then we're waiting on the uh, event to be successful. Once it's successful, we know that we can move on and the player has the item, et cetera. So that's kind of an overview of the Open and App Billing plugin. And I think that gets us to the end of the, the scheduled content. I'd like to leave the rest open for questions, comments, or any other areas we'd like to dive into. Sure. <clears throat> so for everyone on the call, feel free to just enter any questions that you have for us, and we'll make sure to get you the answer. We've got one already, uh, which is, do we aim to provide similar functionality to OpenIAB? In other words, do we plan to give you something that will replace the need to have a plugin like OpenIAB in our SDK? So we've got Marco, who's the lead developer on the tools team here. So Marco, did you want to take that? Yeah. Um, so. Uh, this is not something that we currently. This is not something that we currently have in our our um, our uh, our plugin right now. But it is definitely something that is on our roadmap, which is to uh, have a full integrated solution where uh, you don't need any other you know third party in app billing. Um, it, as you know, this is like a, it's a lot of work to put uh, uh, in app purchase plugin that supports. You know all the different platforms um, we have. We we want to be able to support you know Windows, Amazon, uh, uh, iOS, and Android, um, and a, a few other uh, different platforms, uh, all from the from the same plugin. So this is currently in development, and um, we're we don't have an exact ETA for it, but uh, it is definitely on the roadmap and something that's planned. All right. Great. If anybody else has any questions, feel free to post them now. 
Um, are there common questions that you guys have encountered in the use of the uh, of Unity with the the plugins at this point? Um, let me think about that. So I, I think a lot of the hangups really come from the uh, idiosyncrasies with Google and Apple and how they do things just a little bit differently. So be very patient with yourself on that. Like it's it's a little confusing, and even if you're looking at Stack Overflow or the official documentation for these process flows. It really can be confusing at times and not 100% clear if you have all the bases covered. But also know that from the in-app billing side, that plugin is pretty uh, heavy in terms of all of the different features and platforms that it can plug into. For this particular purchase of, across Google Play or Apple, we're using very little of the plugin, so it's pretty simple to get this set up and running with open in-app billing. Great. The other thing that I've also uh, noticed from time to time that I should call out is uh, across, and this, this goes beyond just OpenIAB, but across the different plugins that are available, there's sort of a range of the features that they give you. The key thing that you need to be looking for when evaluating any of these is whether or not they give you access to the receipt. So if they're not actually giving you true access to the receipt so that you can send it up to us, they're not really doing any good. I know that there are a couple that uh, we've encountered that do that. If you guys need uh, any Recommendations, I mean, if you're, for some reason OpenIAB is one that doesn't appeal to you, uh, let us know. We can certainly give you some additional feedback. Oh, uh, there was one, I, I, I'm thinking that this is probably a recommendation that someone's thrown out there. He's talking about using the Sumla IAP. Is that uh, also one that you worked with? Uh, so I haven't set up a, a demo or an example with the Sumla package uh, for, for demoing, but I have played a little bit with the Sumla package uh, a few months ago, and it seems that it maps uh, to in-app purchases for the client side, but I'm not sure if they give you the receipt for the PlayFab server-side validation. So, so Sumo will give you the ability to purchase things on the client, but it's not going to give you the ability to uh, plug directly into the in-app billing side. So, And, or, and uh, just to in intervene on that. Um, we, we have been talking with Sumla uh, a couple times, actually, to do a full integrated solution to their suite. Uh, yes, actually, that is true. We have we have <laughs> been doing that. So yeah, hopefully we'll have some more that we can share with you guys in the near future on the Sumla front. Um, one other question that's come up, well, okay, this one's a bit broad. It's basically outlining which ones you should not use. Um, <laughs> Honestly, I don't know that anyone here knows every possible plugin that's available uh, in the marketplace right now, so I don't think we can give you a broad overview. Uh, in general, OpenIAB is the one that we've been working with the most. It, it gives you what you need in terms of getting the receipt. Uh, if you're looking to save time, that's really the one that I would go with. I will say, though, if you're looking to go uh, Apple with OpenIAB, there was some issues with their repository, so I had to do some additional work to get that working. but it. It looks like everything is in there and should be working. It just there was some kind of error on their side that I had to manually relink things up. So that is one thing to be in uh, keeping in mind that for the receipt, getting the receipt on Apple platforms with OpenIAB, there is an extra step of having to uh, grab that receipt in the transaction as it comes back in the plugin, and then forwarding that to the callback. And for that, I used I put it in the developer payload. So it's, it, that should be working uh, by default, but in the event that it's not, you can contact us here. I can show you how I did that, or uh, contact OpenIAB. I'm sure they can uh, help you with that as well. Um, <clears throat> one quick follow-up to that. We were just asked if the OpenIAB is, uh, plugin is not included with the PlayFab SDK. We don't distribute it as part of our SDK. We do distribute it as part of the sample that, we're, that we put together. So it, it is something that's available for you to use and play around with in the full implementation. Um, the other question we were asked is, is whether OpenIAB is, is better than Sumla. Uh, I, I would not describe it as better. I would say that's kind of an apples and oranges. They have different functionality that they offer from one another. Um, yeah, what I would recommend is just look through the feature set uh, to decide which one that you really want to work with. Um, and then, all right, one other is, let me pull the question up here. Uh, somebody's asking about, uh, statistics and purchase trend tools, things to get you your pie charts or line graphs showing what your customers are doing and what they're spending money on. Um, 
That's not built in right now. Uh, I will say that we are in the process of putting together some additional functionality for you guys to get you some richer details in terms of the events that are logged. And we do automatically log events for every purchase, by the way. So you don't need to do any custom eventing around that. Uh, we do make all of the events available to you. Uh, if you wanted to connect them up through segment.com, there's a tab for that. When you go into your titles, settings, and it's in the analytics tab. Actually, it's, it's specifically settings, analytics, export. Uh, you put your segment.com key in there, and that automatically makes all the, uh, the data flow out to segment. Using that, you can then send the data wherever you need to if you want to use one of the existing analytics providers, or if you want to use a Tableau integration, you could have it output to your own uh, database. Uh, alternately, we also have a, um, a partner that we work with called Appery, who have a, a great analytics package that you can use, which uh, we're already set up with for ingestion of all of our events. But again, we'll also be offering some more tools around that in the near future. Okay, yeah. and from the game manager, you can see a for a particular player, you can see all of the purchases that they've made under that account. So I'm showing that in the in the window in the browser window there. Uh, so that might help too with some depending on what you wanted to do. It may not give you the details to build line graphs for all of your players, but it definitely will be able be useful in testing and following specific players, especially around cases where there may be a problem or a hacking attempt. You can take a look at their purchase history and get some additional data to make to make a decision. Okay. <clears throat> well, that's pretty much it for the questions. Uh, okay. Yeah, we're not seeing any more coming in at the moment. So I just want to take a sec to thank everybody for your time today. Uh, again, apologies for the delay in getting started. Uh, slight technical issues on our side. Um, I think everybody on this call is probably used to that in this industry. Um, so. Yeah, and of course, thanks to Zach and Marco for their time today, for being available to, to walk everybody through this, um, and looking forward to our future talks. If you guys have any suggestions or recommendations on talks in the future too, feel free to send them to us at devrel, it's D-E-V-R-E-L at placehub.com, so that we can get an idea of what information you guys are looking for. Uh, also, be sure to visit our forums if you have any questions at all about our tech. Uh, that's it community.placeab.com. Uh, the last question did come in just now, and it's, uh, will the presentation be available online? And the answer is yes. Uh, we do record these presentations, uh, and we will be making them available online after the talk along with the slides. And yeah, there you go. There's the information on some of our upcoming talks is right there. OK, with that, thanks again, everybody. Looking forward to talking to you again in the future. Thank you.